One of the most extraordinary events of the past century began just a hundred years ago in 1904, the construction of the Panama Canal. Here is the phenomenal saga of how it came about. For centuries, thought had been given to the construction of a waterway connecting the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. A canal commission to determine where a waterway could be built over the Isthmus of Panama was created as early as the first term of President Ulysses S. Grant. And in January 1870, the steam sloop USS Nipsic, with a crew of over 100 officers and men, left the Brooklyn Navy Yard and steamed south to survey the situation. The storeship USS Guard accompanied the Nipsic, carrying a rifle for every man, whiskey, quinine, and an extra 600 pairs of shoes, 100 miles of telegraph wire, and supplies for four months. This included 7,000 pounds of bacon, 10,000 pounds of bread, 30 gallons of beans, and 2,500 pounds of coffee. The expedition was seeking the narrowest part of the isthmus. Earlier expeditions had given varying accounts of where the best route would be. And from 1870 until 1875, under Grant's presidency, seven expeditions surveyed the isthmus. One route seriously considered was across Nicaragua, the other across the province of Panama. Wherever they went ashore, expeditionary crews were subjected to daunting jungle conditions, fierce heat, drenching rain, horrific tropical insects, and fierce jungle wildlife. And during the 1870s, while these various expeditions were hacking their way through the Central American jungles, the world was undergoing an enormous transformation. One event in particular, the construction of the Suez Canal, would have a profound effect on the canal that would eventually connect the Atlantic to the Pacific. We board our cruise liner to transit the canal. During our journey, we'll see how its construction came about. The story is an international thriller that involved several larger-than-life figures, three U.S. presidents, and a project that almost toppled the French Empire. Before passing through the canal, we'll talk about the incredible story of its history, explain how it works, and then actually show our transit. Let's begin by going back to the latter part of the 1800s. The construction of the Panama Canal was one of the most fantastic adventure stories of modern times. The greatest feat of engineering ever attempted in the modern world, its creation also sparked the 24-hour bloodless revolution and the discovery of the cause of yellow fever and malaria. Gold was first discovered in California in 1848, and the gold rush that followed created an avalanche of prospectors who wanted to go from the East Coast to the West as quickly as possible. Mining towns sprang up everywhere. The big question was how to go West. The popular mantra was across the plains, around the Horn, or over the Isthmus. Across the plains was a long and arduous journey fraught with danger. Around the Horn was much longer, and Tierra del Fuego challenged the traveler with the perils of high seas, strong tides, and powerful winds. Over the Isthmus was by far the shortest route, saving 8,000 miles in months of time. In 1850, to expedite the journeys of the thousands of travelers choosing the Isthmus, the Panama Railroad Company came into existence. And five years later, one could cross the Isthmus in style and comfort in just over three hours in a railroad coach. In the ensuing decade, over 400,000 people, mostly prospectors, took this route. The completion of the Suez Canal in 1869 electrified the world and captured the attention of visionaries everywhere. The ceremony celebrating the opening of Suez, aside from being attended by much of European royalty, featured the premier performance of Verdi's opera Aida, commissioned expressly for this event. It was an era of infinite possibilities. The man who built the Suez was a force of nature named Ferdinand de Lesseps. De Lesseps had been born in Paris in 1805 and became the toast not only of Paris, but of all of Europe. 